What's up guys? It's me again. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another gyno advice video. My name is Jacob and this is my YouTube channel. I was a sufferer of gyno for 15 years from 12, I'm going to call it 11, to 27. So call that 16 years. 16 years I went through what you quite possibly are going through now. So eventually I decided to get the surgery. It was an easy decision because I'd wanted it for so long. Nothing was going to stop me. Nothing. But I didn't know what kind of recovery was in store for me. I thought that I'd be back in the gym in a couple of weeks with a fully flat chest, no bruising, no swelling, nothing, no issues. That's what we all think, right? Until it doesn't happen like that. <laughs> and then you could quite possibly be searching for videos just like this one. So today I'm here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to run through my version of a classic gynosurgery recovery. We're talking about a recovery that goes relatively well, no serious complications, but these are different limits that I would quite confidently say you should stick to as far as physical activity for these first two months. We're gonna cover the first two months. Because I'm gonna say that even though I did have the hematomas develop, I was able to train in the gym, you know, pain, relatively pain-free, relatively uh, stress-free after two months, even with the recovery that I had. So sit back, stay tuned, and let's run through it. But first, a quick word from our exclusive video sponsor, The Ridge Wallet. Sup guys, first and foremost, thank you for clicking on this video. Secondly, this video is brought to you by none other than The Ridge, makers of the world famous and now YouTube famous, at least on my channel, Ridge Wallet. In less than two seconds, I'm going to show you exactly what the hype's all about. Next minute. That's what it's all about. This wallet holds just as much as this. Yet this one is bulky, ugly, and outdated. Now this one, being that it is a Ridge wallet, holds 12 cards. It's sleek, it's stylish, it holds cash. There's over 30 different styles, including this one, which is matte black, and this one, currently unopened, which is 18 karat gold. Not only does the look and design speak for itself, but the packaging is next level also. And when it comes to giving a gift, when it comes to even gifting yourself, when you deserve it of course, that's a win. The whole entire wallet is the exact size of a credit card, and the way that you access the cards is to push up from the bottom. Let's be honest, 40,000 five star reviews, they don't lie. There is a lifetime warranty on each of these wallets. If, for whatever reason, you're not happy, you have a 45-day window to receive a full refund. I've got to be honest, at first I was skeptical. I have seen it advertised on other YouTube channels, YouTube channels I respect, actually, and enjoy watching. So it was only a matter of time until I tried it out for myself. It's not only wallets. The website does have an entire range of products designed to carry less and live more. And that is a quote. That I've actually lived by for years. Head over to www.ridge.com slash Jacob. Use code Jacob for 10% off. And I guarantee you, this will be, whether it's in black or 18 karat gold, the last wallet you'll ever use. Guaranteed. Because there's no way in the world I'm going to be carrying something like this round anymore. Cheers, guys. And enjoy the video. Right, so first and foremost, I'm going to say that I'm no doctor, obviously. This is not uh, professional medical advice. This is basically a two month protocol, a two month recovery protocol that I have sort of drafted and I've sent through to a few people that have asked for it. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to bring this to my YouTube channel. So here we go. You go and get the surgery. That's it. A day after. You've got tape on your chest, you've most probably got uh, drains in and at the very least you're going to be sore, you're going to be on painkillers of some sort and you're not going to want to move much at all. You're not going to want to move much at all, and you shouldn't move much at all, which is the first mistake I made. I was up and about walking around after two days. I was in a plane on the third day going back home because I'd traveled for the surgery. So guys, during that first week, this is the protocol for the first week, one total week, seven days. Stay still. Stay as still as possible. Do absolutely nothing physical if you can get away with it. A little bit of walking is fine, but I'm going to say no more than 100 meters. Honestly, it's that first week that not only the incisions around the outside are going to be healing, but whatever damage, whatever cuts have been made inside of your body, because at the end of the day, let's remember, they're cutting some flesh out of your body, even on the best of days. It's not going to be easy to heal from something like that. So that's why the drains are there, because there will be some bleeding. And once the tape's off, the drains are out, that's why you put the compression vest on, to reduce the risk of complications. Anyway, first week, I thought that'd be easy. 
the least amount of exercise possible, all right? Stay still. You might need some help. You might need some time off work. But I tell you what, if you spend anything like the amount of time that I did looking forward to the surgery, do yourself a favor and take some time off for the recovery. Right, we're into the second week. The compression vest stays on. The walking can be extended. I believe if you are in you know, an office-based job, uh, you know, light duties type of thing, you can go back to work. I'm gonna say after a week, you can go back to work, but no physical job. Let's say you're on a construction site. Let's say you do a trade. I mean, anything that you're gonna be lifting, anything you're gonna be running, anything you're gonna be jumping up and down, uh, jumping up on top of things, possibly lifting things above your head, Nah, none of that shit. None of that shit for the first four weeks. So a sedentary job, you can go back to work in the second week, depending on how you're feeling. And regardless of whether you do that or not, um, basically that second week, minimal exercise, no lifting at all. And um, that'll bring us to the end of week number two. Week number three. Week number three is, is the point where I've seen the best recoveries feel relatively good. You know, I've had people message me in that third week saying, right, I feel like I'm ready to go back to the gym. What do you think? And I'm like, well, I know that in my situation after two weeks, there was no way in hell I was going back to the gym. But after five weeks, I started feeling that way. So I'm going to say that in that third week, depending on how your recovery has gone, if there's minimal bruising, minimal swelling, everything's gone to plan, keep that compression vest on for that third week. But I'm going to say that walking is a real possibility now. Running? No. I don't like the thought of running in the third week after a gyno surgery. I don't even like the thought of running in the fourth week. So running, jogging, I'm going to include in the fifth week. But as far as the third week, I think someone having a, a decent recovery is going to start feeling, you know, pretty good. I still feel like there is a risk of, you know, some damage being done if you were to jump up and down too much. And it's in this third week that I really noticed a, a tightness. Um, a tightness beginning, especially when I put my arm above my head. Not exactly sure what was happening underneath the skin, but something, something was, was pulling, something was extremely tight. And I think it's because I had the swelling, which was in turn extending, you know, my skin, which was in turn then pulling on something from up here. So I feel like my extreme level of swelling was the reason behind that tightness, but that's what I noticed in the third week. I suppose it would have been there in the second week, but I wasn't prepared at that stage to actually put my hand above my head. So in the third week, I began experimenting like that. I did have these massive hematomas that I was dealing with, and to be honest, um, at that stage, you know, it, <laughs> at that stage, guys, day to day, um, a success was me putting a smile on my face. You know what I mean? I was that depressed at that point, but. I did have faith that it would all work out in the end, and it did. And that's what I tell each and every one of you guys who message me. So, week number three, similar to week number two. I'm going to say week number four, that's when it changes, right? I'm going to say in week number four, if you want to go back in the gym, if you want to start testing it, you want to start doing a few light chest exercises, maybe try out some tricep exercises first, um, followed by some shoulder exercises, and then finally actually target that chest. I think during that fourth week, you can start to experiment. I certainly think during that fourth week, you can train your legs in the gym. But I'm going to say no running still, because it's that bouncing, bouncing, bouncing that, I mean, let's be honest, it's not going to do you well if you've got cuts. It's not going to do you well if you're trying to heal. Okay, so fourth week, back in the gym, start experimenting, only walking, in my opinion, if you do have tightness, try and stretch it out. Now, there is one thing that I do remember. I was never in pain, but it just felt weird. It felt really, really weird when I stretched my hand above my head. So just a factor that you might have to deal with. Week number four, depending on your recovery, definitely start exercising, at least in some way, shape or form. Now, week number five, I'm going to say, if you have a successful recovery, if you're feeling confident about running, about training, hard, then do it. Week number five, you could well be fully recovered. You could well be. But for those of you in the middle ground, for those of you who, you know, are still feeling a little bit, a little bit apprehensive about going in the gym, you still might have some soreness, some discoloration, some bruising, continue the walking, continue the leg training if that's something you want to do. But it is now time to really uh, begin moving that chest again, begin flexing those chest muscles again, and, you know, begin 
I guess, building back somewhat of the muscle you may have lost. Now, it's only been a month. It's only been five weeks. You won't have lost a lot. But due to the fact that you won't have been using your chest, I'd say you definitely have lost a fair amount of strength. But that's something that can come back real quick. So I wouldn't be worried about that whatsoever. Week six. And this is where I would say confidently you should be able to start jogging again. You should be able to start jogging. You should be able to start doing your cardio-based workouts and not feel compromised in the chest area. Now, once again, that is with a decent recovery. Okay, that's with a good recovery and for someone who does feel comfortable doing that. But at the end of the day, like I said before, you spent so long preparing for the surgery. Having a couple of months off from the gym is not going to be the end of the world. It's going to be well worth it. And it's probably something you should at least prepare for. Because what I always say is expect the best, but prepare for the worst. And week number seven, guys, personally, I was back in the gym. I was putting on some weight. Um, and I was relatively happy with how I was feeling physically. Not how I was looking physically, because I still did have some real remnants of the terrible recovery that I went through. But as far as how I felt physically, the tightness had subsided. Um, you know, thankfully, in two months, the hematomas had begun to really subside. And Lo and behold, I was on the road to a 100% recovery. Now that 100% recovery took almost three years, which is absolutely ridiculous. But I will say that I was 95% recovered by around about that two month mark. And that, my friends, is where I'll leave you. So week seven and eight, jogging, certainly. Uh, by the end of week eight, with a good recovery, you should be feeling 100%, no doubt. With a bad recovery, like I said, you might not be feeling 100% for three years. That's just the truth. That's the risk we take in modifying our bodies. But at the end of the day, it was still worth it. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you've got something from this video. This was my two month gyno recovery protocol. I am not a doctor. This is just from experience and my opinions. And with all that being said, have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching and peace out. Thank you.